When I was nine years old, my grandfather gave me a present. There was nothing extraordinary about it, just a nondescript brown box with my name haphazardly scrawled atop it. Even so, my young self was enthralled by it. I wish he'd never given it to me. Now Jonathan, before I hand this to you, I need you to make me a promise, Grandpa Smirk, holding the parcel just out of my reach. What is it? I huffed, crossing my arms. Grandpa's expression instantly shifted. His jovial demeanor melted, leaving a cold, stern visage in its wake. I'd never seen anything like that before, and it frightened me. Promise me that you won't open this until your 18th birthday. My heart sank. Why was Grandpa dangling a gift in front of me if he didn't want me to open it for another nine years? But, why? I asked, tears welling in my eyes. Look, kiddo, I'm getting old and I don't know how much longer I have left. I want to make sure that I get this to you before that day comes. This gift, it's special. I want you to be more mature once you open it so you'll use it wisely, he said, placing a loving hand on my shoulder. But I don't want you to die, Grandpa. I love you. I couldn't contain my sobs any longer. I began wailing, fat sloppy tears tumbling down my cheeks. Hey, hey, no, no need to cry. This is just a precaution, okay? We still have plenty of time together. I know what'll cheer you up. Grandpa grinned, that warm, tender smile cutting off my waterworks. Ice cream, that did the trick. All my worries washed away with a nice, big bowl of cookies and cream. That day will always stand out in my mind. Because contrary to Grandpa's reassurances, we did not have plenty of time left. He passed away two days later. Grandpa died due to complications from a triple bypass surgery he'd had three months prior. A stint in one of his arteries didn't hold up. He lost his life in the back of an ambulance just half a mile away from the hospital. I was devastated. Grandpa had always been such a rock in my life. He was my best friend, my confidant, my life guide and I was completely lost without him. That month, I cried more than I ever had in my entire nine years of existence. Grandpa was the first relative I had lost, which only made my struggle for closure that much more difficult. The funeral was a blur. Though I was absolutely crushed, it was nice to see how many people came to pay their respects. I was glad to know that Grandpa was so loved. I found myself alone in my room a lot after that. My eyes would often wander to the brown package. Though I came close on a multitude of occasions, I never opened it. I had to respect Grandpa's wishes. As the years passed on, I gradually forgot about the box. It had migrated to the top shelf of my closet. Soon, it wasn't even an afterthought. My priorities had shifted. Girls, video games, and my growing gang of buddies garnered my full attention. Before I knew it, my 18th birthday was upon me. By the time I was done celebrating with family and friends, I was exhausted. I collapsed onto my bed, sending a small tremor throughout the room. As if on cue, I heard something fall inside my closet. My eyes grew wide. As dinner plates, Grandpa's gift, I bolted to the closet and threw open the door. There it was, lying face down among heaps of dirty clothes. I picked up the box, blowing off the thick layer of dust coating its packaging. My own hastily written name greeted me in black, faded letters. I didn't hesitate. I tore open the gift like a child on Christmas Day. Nine years. I'd waited nine excruciating years for this moment. My jaw fell open when I laid eyes upon what lay within. Inside, shrouded in wrapping paper, was the most beautiful watch I had ever seen. It was ornately decorated. A glimmering gold band with a matching gold face shimmered up at me. The hands ticked meticulously around twelve elaborately emblazoned numbers. I was in awe. It all began to click. Grandpa wanted me to wait until I was older to open the gift so that I'd take care of it. Younger me probably would have been a bit more careless. I began to fasten the shiny gold band around my wrist when a piece of paper fluttered to the ground at my feet. I set the watch down along with the box and picked it up. Dear Jonathan, happy 18th birthday. I hope that I will be there to celebrate this monumental milestone alongside you. But if I'm not, know that I love you with all my heart. Though I may not be there in person, I will always be with you in spirit. Tears began trickling down my cheeks. Dozens and dozens of memories of our time together assaulted my brain all at once, like some sort of intense collage. I missed him so much. I almost put the paper down and locked the watch away for the night, but I forced myself to continue reading. I have entrusted you with my most valuable possession. 
It may look like an ordinary wristwatch, but its value is immeasurable. Below, I have included a small list of instructions and rules for wearing the watch. Please be mindful of its abilities and treat it with the utmost care. There is only one of its kind in existence. This watch has the ability to control time. There is a dial on the side of the watch. Pull this dial out to pause time. Turn it backward or forward until you reach your desired point. Then push the dial back into resume. Use this sparingly. Do not travel forward or backward in time by more than a week. This could have serious implications on the time space continuum. Do not use the watch for nefarious purposes. You're a good boy, so I know that won't be an issue. But just in case I have to spell it out for you, do not use the watch for the acquisition of large sums of money, sexual favors, or expensive worldly possessions. Put this part over carefully. Whatever you do, make sure that the watch does not get damaged. As previously stated, this is a one-of-a-kind item. You do not want to meet the creature charged with fixing it. The price to do so is steep. I'm trusting you with this, Jonathan. Follow the instructions, and you will prosper. Failure to do so will result in rather unpleasant consequences. Reap its benefits wisely. Again, have a happy birthday, grandson. Love, grandpa. Was this a joke? Maybe grandpa had some sort of degenerative disease that I hadn't picked up on. There was only one way to find out. I fastened the watch around my wrist. I turned it over a couple times, admiring its elegance. Grandpa sure did have good taste. I held my breath as I reached for the dial. This was it, the moment of truth. I pulled the dial out, and nothing. The watch's hand stopped ticking, but other than that, I didn't notice anything strange. Must just be an ordinary watch after all. I didn't even bother to push the dial back in. I began to trudge downstairs dejectedly. Even if the watch didn't have any supernatural abilities, at least mom would think it was cool. I rounded the corner to the stairs and nearly tripped. I stopped in my tracks, mouth agape. I struggled to comprehend the scene before me. Mom had her back to me. She was standing over a pot, but the steam was frozen in place. It wasn't moving and neither was mom. I continued to drink in my surroundings. The TV was paused between scenes of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Dad was seated in his favorite armchair, glancing down at his phone. A mug of green tea was raised halfway to his lips. But that meant, I snapped out of my stupor, pushing the dial back in. Everything picked up right, where it had left off, like nothing had happened. Andy Samberg screamed through the television at some comically ignorant street thug. Dad loudly sipped his tea, and Mom hummed a soft tune. A steam wafted up from the pot. It worked. It really worked. I tried it again just to be sure. Everything froze, just like it had the first time. A smile began to inch its way across my lips. I was going to have a lot of fun with this thing. The remainder of the weekend passed about as you would expect. I used the watch whenever it benefited me. I skipped past mom's hundredth lecture of the week on why vaping is bad. I rewound my turns in our weekly game of Uno to shift the odds in my favor. I paused time to fart in a crowded elevator. You get the drift. I was having the time of my life. When Monday rolled around, I was ecstatic. I'd been dealing with some particularly nasty bullies, and I was really looking forward to teaching them a lesson. I skipped through all my morning classes and resumed right at lunchtime. I wasn't hungry, well, not for food. I was hungry for revenge. It didn't take long before the bastards waddled into the cafeteria and sauntered straight up to me. Carson and Dylan were on the heavier side. They liked to use their weight to their advantage, especially against vertically challenged kids such as myself. Sup, boy, that sandwich of yours is looking pretty tasty. I hope you don't mind if I take a few bites, Carson said, shoving me aside while licking his crusty lips. I grinned, reaching for the watch. I don't mind one bit, I replied, pulling out the dial. I watched as Carson's grubby hand froze right before it grabbed hold of my turkey sandwich. The noisy cafeteria instantly went deathly silent. Hundreds of kids sat still as statues, all focused on their own menial activities. Though I had all the time in the world, I didn't hesitate. I shot up from my seat and began punching Carson hard in the face. Dylan was next. I released all the pent-up rage that had been bubbling inside me for the majority of my senior year. I showed them no mercy. After the months of torment they had put me through, I wanted those two to suffer. Once I was done beating the ever-living crap out of them, I took Carson's arms 
and fashioned them around Dylan's waist. I gave Carson a wedgie, then clasped Dylan's fingers around his underwear. Next, I pushed their faces together until their chubby lips were touching. I patted myself on the back. It was so satisfying to see them like that, and it was even more satisfying. When I pushed the dial back in, I was elated when kids began pointing and laughing. Hey, look at those two. Gross. Phew, get a room. Ugh, that's disgusting. The pair immediately recoiled. They were dumbstruck. The pure shock on their faces was priceless. My heart raced with excitement. As the pain began to sink in, tears spilled down Carson's cheeks. Dylan placed a hand over his left eye, staring daggers at me with his good one. He leaned in close and whispered into my ear, I know you did this somehow. This isn't over. Ooh, I'm so scared. Are you and your lover going to kiss me to death? Dylan raised a fist, but thought better of it. He lowered his head in defeat. We'll make you pay. You'll see. The bullies both flipped me off as they turned to leave. They trudged out of the cafeteria, rubbing their bruised faces as kids relentlessly hurled insults at them. I almost felt kind of bad for them until I remember how bad they'd been to me. That is, the rest of my day was going by without a hitch. Thanks to the watch, I had successfully found the answer key to the science test I'd forgotten to study for, and I ensured that I would pass with flying colors. I was shooting my shot with one of the cutest cheerleaders in school when it happened. So I was thinking, maybe you and I could catch a movie this Sunday. You know, like if you're slam, pain streaked across the right side of my face as I was brutally bashed into a locker. My arms were pinned to my side and I couldn't move. Sorry, Jonathan. I don't date losers like you, Jenny said as she pretentiously flipped her hair behind her and walked away. I turned my attention to my attackers. What the hell? I had a decent shot with her before. Smack. A fist connected with my face. I was seeing stars. Shut up. I know it was you. You seriously embarrassed us earlier. I'm going to kick your teeth in. Carson and Dylan, just as I'd suspected. My heart thumped like a jackhammer in my chest. I couldn't reach the watch. Unless a teacher just happened to walk by, I was screwed. And then, the worst possible outcome played out. That's a pretty nice watch you've got there. Maybe I'll take that as a down payment. Carson snickered, reaching for my wrist. Now, screw you. Leave the watch alone. I growled, thrashing wildly to keep it out of his grasp. It was no use. I can see that this watch has a lot of value to you. It'd be a damn shame if something was to happen to it. A wide, manic grin stretched across Carson's lips. My eyes grew wide as saucers. No, this couldn't be happening. Carson grabbed my wrist and began slamming the watch against a locker. He smashed it over and over again. Once, twice, three times. I shut my eyes before every blow. And then, the moment I had been dreading, everything stopped. I slowly forced my eyes open. Time had been paused. I snatched my wrist away from Carson and wiggled out of Dylan's grip. My heart plummeted into my stomach. When I glanced down at the watch, shards of glass littered the floor. The hands had stopped ticking. The hour hand was mangled, facing directly up in the air. I nearly passed out when I looked at the side of the watch. The dial was completely missing. I frantically searched for it, eventually finding it along with the debris on the ground. I tried to shove it back in. No effect. I don't know how long I've been here. I think it's been at least a week, but I can't be certain. There's no way to gauge the passing of time. When it's been paused like this, I've got all the necessities that I need to live, but I'm terrified. Not at the notion that time will never resume. No, I'm afraid that it will. I've been seeing him. The watch repairman that Grandpa mentioned in his letter. He started off far away, but he's getting closer and closer. No matter how far I run, no matter where I hide, he always finds me. Just the sight of him sends fear coursing through every fiber of my being. Because this man, this thing, it has no face. I have a feeling that I won't survive when it catches up to me, so I need to get my story out there. I've preset this post to upload tomorrow. That way, if time does resume, this story should get out to the world. If you're reading this, it's probably too late for me. Please, for the love of all things holy, if this watch somehow falls into your possession, don't use it. Throw it in a storage closet and forget the damn thing even exists because its consequences are far too severe.